What's up, guys? Leopold the Brief here for another episode commentary of Fictional Fights. Sorry, this came out a little later than usual. I got busy this afternoon. I mean, it's still coming out on the right day that I was hoping, the same day that I was trying to get it out, but it, it um, a uh, different hour. I'm tired. I've been busy all day. I'm tired. I've been working on schoolwork, and I've been working on, like, drawing an animatic for a particular fight, so my hand also hurts. But yeah, Krillin versus Hayachi. This is one I was hyped for, like, since the beginning. Like, after I did Jin versus Ri, I'm like, oh, I have to do this one too. But I had to spread it out because Jin's a Tekken character, Hayachi's a Tekken character. I couldn't have two Tekken characters that close to each other. Oh, in this, we I switched up the rules. First of all, I made it like a cool supernova background to fit sort of the universe theme of fictional fights. See, we have like the spacey backgrounds, we have the supernova rules menu, and I'm probably going to redo the intro and the disclaimer to also fit that theme. I just want to kind of give like a space universe type feel, since we are pulling fighters from different universes to fight each other. I think it'd be cool to have a theme. I mean, Death Battle has kind of like this cage match thing going on with the chains and the stone wall. Like, death arena, cage match, all that junk. So, I'm going with the universe theme for mine. And then I got a friend Thomas, or Long Live the Lion King, who's working on his own, and he has like a coliseum type theme. Like, Roman warriors, and they fight the lions and stuff. <laughs> He's got a Versus series too, so go to his channel to check that out. <clears throat> and another reason I redid the rules is because there was one rule I didn't explain well, like the non-canon events thing. Like I was like looking, I was trying to figure out how I was going to do non-canon events. I'm like, well, I mean, because non-canon non doesn't mean it couldn't happen, it just means it didn't happen. So I had to find a way to separate things that couldn't happen with didn't happen. like. Crossovers couldn't happen, because in a crossover, Ryu can beat Cloud Strife, because of Super Smash Brothers, And Cloud Strife is a lot stronger than Ryu, so that couldn't happen. Like, just because Ryu's higher on the tier list than Shulk or something, doesn't mean he could beat Shulk, because Shulk is like universe level. <laughs> and Ryu is like building level, or city level. So, yeah. Now you can see why I don't do crossovers. So I was like, oh, crossovers and spinoffs, only non canon there are some non canon events will allow. But then I kind of redid the rules here in this episode by saying, non canon events are included as long as they are not contradicted by the main canon. So I thought that was pretty reasonable. So we'll take Tekken for example, like, uh, we've seen a uh, Jin have a helmet in space in Tekken 6 in Hihachi's ending. So, you're, you'd think that, like, Jin can't breathe in space, but in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, that was Devil Jin. So, the way I figured out, like, which one is canon, and, like, if Devil Jin could breathe in space or if he couldn't, uh, Dragunov's ending for Tekken 5, Jin is in, like, some container-like thing full of water or fluid or liquid or some kind. And he seems to be breathing and moving around and yelling just fine, so I believe Devil Jin does not need oxygen. Like, regular Jin obviously does, but if he ever gets shot into space, just go Devil Jin. So that's how I uh, came to that conclusion that Jin could survive in space if he's in his devil form. Base form? Probably not. <laughs> oh yeah, and here's the dream sequence. I really wanted to include this to because Krillin, Krillin's my favorite. Okay, not my favorite. He's one of my favorite Dragon Ball characters. I love the little guy. But even though Krillin is one of my favorite, this episode should be proof that I'm not biased when I do this because Hihachi is a boss, and I wanted so bad for Hihachi to win this because he's one of my favorite Tekken characters. He's like behind Jin, like my top three Tekken characters: Jin, Hihachi, and then Xiaoyu. And I'm like, oh yeah, Hachi's gonna destroy the little bald guy. But then I'm like, no, no he can't. Okay. <laughs> so, Krillin beat him. I mean, I was upset because I'm Hachi's my man, dude. 
You, you don't mess with Hayachi, he's my bro. But Krillin is also cool too, I guess. I like Vegeta and Piccolo a lot in Dragon Ball. I might use them in the future sometime. But Krillin, he is he is in my top three, but he's probably number three. Piccolo is probably number one, Vegeta is probably number two, and then Krillin is number three. I just like the whole Piccolo and Gohan thing they got. Piccolo is a better father than Goku will ever be. <laughs> and Vegeta is also a better father than Goku will ever be. And Krillin is a better father than Goku will ever be. <laughs> Plus Krillin and Vegeta got the best girls in Dragon Ball while Goku stuck with Chi Chi. <laughs> ah, poor Goku. Oh, and here's another thing. Spirit Kyoto. Ow, my head. Hold on. Oh, sudden brain freeze. Out of nowhere. This happens to me a lot. I get, like, random brain freezes. I should probably get that checked out. Because I'm, I'm not even drinking or eating anything cold. Just a random... Mm, brain freeze out of nowhere. But another thing. Spirit Kyoto. Someone pointed out that, oh, Hayachi can't just whip this out of nowhere whenever he wants to. And I'm like, okay, but we're looking at these characters at their maximum potential. And Hayachi was at his strongest when he used Spirit Kyoto. So I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's include it. And Krillin still won, so I don't know why it matters. I don't know how, how it's unfair if Hayachi gets Spirit Kyoto if Krillin still wins. It, in fact, it'd be unfair if I didn't include Spirit Kyoto. <laughs> so yeah. That's why I included Spirit Kyoto in here. Oh, I, lo I love that scene. In both tech and the anime movie and the scenario campaign. And the anime movie when he bites through the tomahawk. I mean, I don't really like the anime movie that much, but that scene was cool. And here also where he catches the bullet with his teeth. And he's like, you think that pea shorter can hurt me? Moo ha 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 ha. Mm, so epic. Uh, why didn't he beat Krillin? <laughs> yeah, the jack robots are like heavy and and uh another thing that kind of scales up Hayachi too because again the jack robots can destroy meteors and Hayachi easily beats the jack robots and survived an explosion from one of them. So that's kind of that's kind of impressive that Hayachi did that. So good work Hayachi, you're cool. <laughs> Hayachi's definitely like he's most likely the strongest Mishima in base probably not yeah I think Jin's stronger I think Kazuya Kazuya is definitely the weakest Mishima I mean he's had the least wins out of Jin Hayachi and himself he's been beaten the most out of Jin Hayachi and himself and he I don't know, he just acts like a jerk. Like, he acts cool. Like, when he, when him and Hayachi were fighting in Hanru at the beginning of Tekken 5, they were working together and it was so cool. And then Kazuya's like, um, yeah, go fight him, Hayachi, I'm done with this. And then he hops out a window. That, that wasn't cool. That was, like, that wasn't like, oh man, Kazuya's so cool, what a rebel. That was more like, dude, that was, that, come on, man. That wasn't really a, Dude, you know savage you know moment. That was a, oh, come on, man. Not cool. That It was that kind of moment when Kazuya did that. So yeah, Kazuya's a jerk. Kazuya's pathetic. I mean, he, he is cool. Like, his powers are cool, and his fighting style is cool. But himself, as a character, is really lame. Oh yeah, and here's the fight. More of my terrible animation. This animation took me a week, I think. Because I had to find all the sprites, I had to find the background. Then I had to find all the voice clips, then the actual animation itself. I had to find the sound effects. Even though it's shorter than the Jin vs. Ryu animation, I feel like it took longer. I don't know. I just felt like I put more effort into this one because I wanted it to look good because people were asking over and over for an animation. Oh, and there's my poor stick figure of Spirit Kyoto. <laughs> I, I made this in Pivot. This sprite battle, I made him pivot. So, you can imagine why it's not very good. Oh, and Hayachi gets sliced in half. 
Oh, and there goes the camera crew. They're dead. <laughs> I did it! Him singing and then 18 is actually perfectly fine. And also, just to be clear, I do not think Hayachi could beat Android 18. That that part where he throws her, like, at the beginning to start the fight, it was just there to start the fight. Like, to give them a reason to fight, instead of just randomly fighting out of nowhere. <laughs> like how Jin vs. Ryu, Ryu sensed the devil gene in Jin, and decided to fight him so he could get rid of Jin, and blah blah blah. And then Krillin fought Hayachi because he threw 18. Even though he couldn't actually do that, because 18 would destroy him. But yep, that's about it for this commentary.